Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Just having some thoughts about the colour of our beautiful blue sky up there. It reminds me of the colour of liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, and I just wonder if uh, that's what eventually happens when we get up high enough is that uh, we enter into this liquid layer. Uh, if you just have a go and have a look for pictures of liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen which is obviously uh, apparently what most of the air is comprised of then it's this it is this blue color so I figure that uh, perhaps as you get higher up you get less and less pressure, it gets colder and colder, and in some kind of electromagnetic way, uh, you end up getting liquid gases. And why not? That would give us this blue, and it would give us a layer that manages to stay up there with this bubble of air that we live in here, liquid, liquidy, gaseous, gaseous air, but eventually as you get up higher then there's no reason why it shouldn't just turn into a liquid and then get even colder and colder and perhaps turn into a solid. And so that just uh, makes scientific sense really because that's physics, isn't it? And we know that, uh, you know, the, the difference in pressure and temperature makes a difference and things change from gases to liquids and then solids. So uh, that is pretty much how it could be. Why not? So maybe when uh, rockets are going up into what they call space, it's not a vacuum, but it is... Oh, I'm trying to zoom in on an aircraft here. Where is, where is it? It is uh, possibly liquid. We should be following an aircraft here. I can't see it in the viewfinder very well. Having a Sunday, a Sunday afternoon jaunt. Look at that blue sky. So of course when, when the sun goes away, you don't have uh, the sun lighting up this oxygen rich air, liquid, gas, and uh, it goes dark and out come those stars in that layer of liquid and uh, as far as I understand uh, super helium 4 basically liquid helium once it gets cold enough close to absolute zero but just a few degrees above absolute zero then um, it becomes very still and uh, it becomes very uh, well, it behaves just like a vacuum basically uh, it can also be if you stir liquid uh, helium in a cup then it will continue stirring it will just continue going forever and ever because there is no friction so this is another way that we can have something that replaces <coughs> the vacuum of space we know that it's pretty much impossible to have a vacuum, but uh, to have this, to have a liquid there, somehow makes a lot more sense. And a liquid that offers no resistance, helium, uh, heat doesn't transfer through it either, apparently as far as I'm aware, and it does have gravity-defying properties, and uh, also liquid oxygen, becomes magnetic so you have all these physical properties of 
of uh, liquid gases that are very familiar to us that uh, behave differently when uh, when they ha are at a different temperature and pressure. And that's pretty much the secret of what's going on, I think. <coughs> Doesn't take us any closer to what's, uh, to finding out what's actually, how it all came about, where it was graded, but, you know, helium is the most abundant uh, substance in the universe. And so when they talk about uh, dark matter comprising more than 90% of uh, the space out there, then why can't it just be uh, liquid helium? It would be almost impossible to detect because you just can't see it. But we can see this, this blue tinge of what could be liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. Yeah? Anyway, food for thought, I'll try and catch the sunset. Thank you very much. on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> 